Joining me now is the Chief Executive of the Free Speech Union in New Zealand, Jonathan Ayling. Jonathan, great to see you. Uh, there's lots I want to talk to you about and get your opinions on. We've had a couple of pieces of le legislation from the, uh, Jacinda Ardern's government. One again tackling hate speech, supposedly. Another tackling uh, something to do with language compliance or some weird kind of idea. And there's this, also this whole issue of how the Maori language now seems to be supplanting English and how can this possibly be beneficial to uh, a well-functioning democracy? Jonathan, take us through it. Well, look, uh, that's right. We've, we've got a, a bit of a contradiction here where uh, we've got liberal authoritarianism coming in place and you think uh, those are a contradiction in terms. That's not really the case. A government that, uh, despite its progressive values, uh, is, is cracking down on a lot of these basic civil liberties. So just on Sunday, the Minister of Justice announced or re-announced, really, that uh, hate speech laws would be uh, introduced into Parliament and they're aiming to have these uh, passed before the next election. 18 months ago, we're going to jump back a little bit, they did try this already, and the Free Speech Union really got in that fight. Let's remind your viewers, we're up against a majority government here. We, we kind of went into it going, they can kind of do what they want. We'll make the case as well as we can, but we, we got to accept that they'll probably just shove it all through. And the response was so strong that we actually succeeded in, in seeing these uh, laws shelved. And the Minister of Justice left Parliament, the, the one that introduced them, left Parliament several months ago. This new Minister of Justice has come in. I think she thinks that a lot of people have moved on. They've forgotten about this issue, more concerned about uh, costs of living or other issues that are distracting them, and she thinks we can get these through. But uh, the Free Speech Union is ready to, to be pushing back against these again, and we're a broad coalition of, of different political perspectives, different uh, cultural values, so it's, it's certainly not monochrome in any way, but we believe that uh, hate speech laws are, are bad for uh, the marginalised and the vulnerable before anyone else actually but really they're bad for all of us you also so tell mentioned us, tell us tell us the hate speech laws why they are bad but also tell me about these language compliance officers who will be going into to into government departments to supposedly make democracy more inclusive this sounds like a woke left-wing nightmare to me it sounds like covid on steroids where you're having these jumped up characters who are suddenly full of authority wandering up to people and saying i heard you just called the the woman over there a sheila and i'll say yeah i did call her a sheila because that's what she is whoops handcuffs down thrown on the ground beaten up and dragged off is this what new zealanders can look forward to well, uh, they say the more things change, the more things stay the same. So maybe it is this uh, woke progressive stuff, but in many ways it's straight out of 1984 as well, isn't it? This is this is quite Orwellian. In I mean, I I, I do have to wonder at the self awareness of the people that draft this legislation. They are called plain language officers. Uh, and look, at one level, Ron, the intent behind the legislation is actually really positive. They say uh, legislation and communications from government in general shouldn't be super convoluted and inaccessible and so we should be writing at a level that the public who uh, in a democracy we're supposed to be representing, they can access it. And there's a free speech argument to that, that actually people are able to engage in that conversation. But this is already happening. Uh, we don't need a law to require bureaucrats to do this. I mean, it, it's just... Well, I can tell you, Jonathan, it, if it... Plain speech, plain language officer comes up to me, they're going to get some very, very plain language very quickly, <laughs> and it's all going to be uh, words of four letters and one syllable. Um, uh, listen, the hate speech laws, now this is really uh, disturbing in the sense that in, a, in New Zealand at the moment, you, you, there's been a big push to be more inclusive of the Maori, of the Maori language, the so-called iwi, the different tribes. Uh, there's a lot of new language coming in. I'm going to show you this poster. Here's a poster for a pop group which was sent to me called 6060, 660 or whatever. But uh, you can't see it closely, but I'll, I'll just take it down, but just show you briefly. It's all in Maori. There's not a word of English anywhere in there. Now, if you uh, listen to, um, you know, your various uh, TV shows, uh, Jacinda Ardern addressing even the United nations there's a lot of maori coming in how surely there are plenty of people i said a large pr proportion of people in new zealand don't actually speak maori how are they responding to this push to make this almost the national language 
Of course. And and look, uh, from the outset, I'll say uh, Maori, or uh, we call here Te Reo, is a national language. That is already the case, and it has been for many years. And so on one level, uh, I think it is appropriate that for those who want to engage in this, those who have the capacity or, or the interest to learn, uh, should be able to express themselves with sure, their free course. speech rights. But they're making it compulsory, aren't they? But 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 this is you know you've talked about this a lot in the past as well, Ron. We when you control the language, whether that be a specific language used or just the words we're able to use, you're able to control the arguments. And uh, it, it, it's very difficult for people who are uh, opposing the coerced use of certain language, whether you know te reo or or other plain language officers are jumping in on it. If if we can't actually come to the table with the way we want to express ourselves, then free speech is is a, a farce really. And so that's where we come at it. I think there's an element where people can be proud of the, the heritage that we have in Te Reo. And we, you know, for those who uh, know it or have learned it, own that. But to try and lay that on other people, and, and really this is where we get into it, you're a bad person if you don't uh, speak in this way, say these words, uh, you know, use this terminology. We worked on uh, the local government elections, which we recently had here, and uh, one of the uh, Human Rights Commission's uh, communications to all candidates was that they should be using these very particular sets of, of words and, and shouldn't be engaging with people who don't use them and, and should be refusing to accept the comments of certain people who, who, who don't do it in the particular particular way that we're told we have to do it now. And, and this is how speech becomes coerced. Uh, and again, uh, all well, as you'll imagine, is, is, a, is a bit of a folk hero for, for those at the Free Speech Union. But we look at the way he constructed this idea that uh, at a certain level, if, if we're not allowed to use different languages, we can't come up with different ways of thinking. We can't come Absolutely. up with... Absolutely. 100%. Uh, Jonathan, we've got to go. But another time I'd like to chat to you about these insane methane uh, laws that the New Zealand's farmers are now going to be taxed the bejesus out of, and you'll see basically the, the guts being ripped out of New Zealand's great farming industry. I cannot believe what is happening there. Anyway, Jonathan, great to chat to you, and we'll chat again soon.